Hello, everybody! It is Professor Rocco, your boy, coming at you again with another Age of Sigmar Master Class. For this class, we're going to be going over a little bit of an encyclopedia of AOS terms. You see, some people came up to me after class, lit into my DMs, and said, Hey, Rocco! What the hell's a hammer unit again? And I'm like, you know what? That's fair. We said some things. We made some assumptions, but you know what? If you assume, you're going to make an ass out of you and me. So here we go together, folks. Are you ready? Because we're going to go on a trip. And it may just be because uh, Warhammer Weekly keeps having me being shouted out on them, but I heard everybody likes slideshows. So without further ado, the Encyclopedia of Age of Sigmar Terms. Presented by Professor Rocco YB, because, you know, I'm your boy. So, heading off here, we're going to start at the beginning. Hammer units. These are your dedicated units in your army for dealing damage. Uh, sometimes people try to make other units into their hammers. It, it just doesn't work. But there's armies like for um, Iron Jaws. you got the Maw Crusher down there. Uh, the Hearthguard Berserkers are a personal favorite. And, well, really, my favorite unit on the list are those Morsar Guard on the far right because I just hate myself and I play Deepkin. It's okay. I'm trying to make Reavers and uh, Thralls work as my next hammers, but you get the idea. Damage dealing units. Next, we've got Anvils. When I'm saying Anvils, I'm saying it's a dedicated unit in your army that can take a punch. You want them holding objectives. They're forming a defensive front here. These are your Ishlayan Guard if you're Deepkin. Phoenix Guard. If you are cities, and then sometimes you're like, all right, my stats suck. But if I have 800 dudes, you can't chew through that. So we're going to throw in the stabbers from the uh, Gloom Spite Gits as well as a nice example. That could be your clan rats. Anything that can take up enough damage to protect your hammers. That's really all we're looking for here, folks. Going on to chaff. Some people say chafe. I chaff at the yoke myself. So these are your cheap and disposable units. You don't care about them. You care about them enough that they can grab you objectives and then they die. And you're like, oh no, you killed my 40-point Aether Wings. Oh no. Uh, and, you know, it could be cheap brimstones if you're uh, Zinch. We've got Noblars. I got a buddy named Pask who runs. Got 300 of them. Uh, yeah, it can get intense. Or you can spend 40 points for three Aether Wings just to annoy the hell out of your opponent. Now we're going to go over drops and battalions. All right, so drops. When you're making a list, these are the actual amount of uh, times you're going to have to place all your units on the table. So like each unit you're dropping is a drop. It just drops is when you're dropping a unit. Just nice, simple, easy. And that is affected by battalions. So battalions are in the uh, the army books, they're the battle tomes. They're a uh, prearranged grouping of units. You pay points for these. Uh, like maybe like between like 80 and like 160 for some of them in points extra onto your army to give the units in that battalion an extra ability. They give your army a free command point, let you take an extra artifact. Some of them even let you take the uh, the extra mount trait there. But what what's really happening is it lowers the amount of drops you have in your army so that you can outdrop somebody else. This is just the act of you get to choose who goes first at the top of battle round one. Um, you know, great to know, very important in list building, because some armies can be low drop, hit you hard, try to come at you. Uh, sometimes you need to be low drops to set up plays. Sometimes you don't care, and you're like, all right, yeah, even if my battalion, you know, I've got like a 14 drop list. You choose who goes first. Ball's in your court. It's a power move. Trust me. Trust me. All right, next we're going to go on to MSU. You've heard it be minimum sized units. You've heard it be multiple small units. Uh, they're both right. It's just the act of taking a lot of small units so not all your stuff can die. It can, it, just so it can't die at the same time. You know, I, I got a unit of 40 handgunners that is six up armor save. Uh, they're going to die just as easily as a unit of 10. But if it's in a unit of 10, they stop dying once you hit the 10th dude on the head. And then I still have 30 more handgunners. And unless you're jacked from rerolling one, splitting your shots is not the best thing you can do in Age of Sigmar. He's just awesome and can get away with it. So continuing here, 
we've got a, another positive to this style of an army where it's denying deep striking from people and teleporting and it protects your hammers um so like in this slide we've got the ko ship the big scary oh my god care john overlords internet freak out well they can't get close enough to my eels because i have a unit of eighth wings in the middle can't hit my dudes if you can't reach them net listing so now here's here's the thing all right follow me camera guy um when you make a list not even when you make the list right let's say i make the list right i'm off in this tournament I win, you go and see it online, you're like, wow, Rocco's great. That'll happen eventually, shut up. So, you see my list, you're like, man, I want to run that. Because he just whooped some ass in that big old tournament. He's the number one uh, ranked player in North America. I'm going to play that list. And then you buy all the stuff, and then you play the list, and you have no idea how the hell to pilot it. That's net listing, in a nutshell. It it just it kills a lot of the hobby uh because you, you're like yeah i'm gonna auto win i'm gonna run somebody over with this list and then you know you spend a thousand bucks to buy the whole thing in full you have no idea what's going on and then you lose all your games and you're like huh i should sell this that rocco's a moron i'm gonna go buy the next list and then you repeat the process you know, it's net decking in Magic the Gathering. It, it generally doesn't work out because you don't know how to play it. And that list is so popular, everybody else has learned how to play around it. So you're doubly behind on that. Next, Battlefield Rolls. All right, now hear me out. So uh, units, when you go to the, uh, the pitched battle profiles in the back of your battle tome, will have like, oh, their battle line unconditionally. Oh, their battle line in a night haunt army. Oh, their battle line if this hero's your general. That's that's great. That's all this is. Um, that's also saying that certain heroes are leaders. Um, if they're behemoths, artillery. Throughout the game, there's going to be certain scenarios where all this is more relevant. But when I'm saying battlefield roles, this is what I'm referencing in my videos. Next, list building tip here. Hot take. Do not... Put all your eggs into one hammer basket. I'm going to read this from the, my screens here. You're here. Follow me. This is a trap. I'll say it again. This is a trap. Yes, I am yelling this out loud in all caps, too, in my typing. People need to stop doing this if they want to win games consistently. Because, all right, let me run you through this dream scenario. All right. You spent, five, uh, let's say, 1,500 points out of your 2,000 points to have one super buffed army unit. Not army, just one unit. It could be 30 dudes with guns. You're like, yeah, I'm going to teleport them. I'm going to have the spell to get it off. For the buff to get it off, I'm going to give them some prayers. I'm going to pump command points into it. Great. You just listed out, like, what are you, a super villain? You, you monologued your whole plan. It's got 20 steps, and Bond over there shot your first hero dead, so you can't do any of it because you can't teleport them up. That's 1,500 points of your army that doesn't affect the game. It doesn't. Can't even move far enough. All because James Bond ended up doing some gold and I <laughs> killed you. And then your whole army list is dead in the water. You know, you play 100 games, you're going to lose most of them. Don't brag that you won 20 because the one guy just couldn't figure out how to stop you by killing one guy. When you start playing in tournaments, everyone's going to see this coming and everyone's going to stop you. So, now going on to gameplay terms here, we've got summoning. Yep, so certain armies, they, they generate summoning points. This could be blood tithe for killing units and corn. This could be depravity points in Slanesh for not killing units. They're at odds with each other. Just, just go with it. Um, it could be sacrificing spells in uh, Seraphon. They get D3 of these points. Uh, they're a resource. You build them up throughout a game, and then you spend them on units uh, to supplement all the dead things in your army, or if you're stomping people, uh, to just double the size of your army and make your opponent freak out. 
Uh, there is one example off the top of my head. There's probably others to getting phased out, though, with Sylvaneth, where they actually still have a spell where you can summon in 10 Dryads. It's off the Branch Wraith on the War Scroll currently. As of late February 2021, what's fingers crossed for Broken Realms, a Larial book, just to give us a little bit of a facelift here. But it's getting phased out by a spell. So why is any of this important? is when units get summoned, they get the benefits of the sub-faction that you're playing as. They get the benefits of being in your army. What they don't get is their battlefield role that we discussed earlier. And why is that important? In the uh, GHB 2020, they came out with scenarios where certain units with, like, let's say, the battle line role could score you bonus points. Now, yes, summoned units will still grab you the normal points in the scenario. But they won't score you any of these juicy bonus points. Because that, that'd be a little bit ridiculous if you could just keep summoning and summoning and summoning. It, you know, it, it can get oppressive. Battle rounds. Yep, this is a master class. We're still going over battle rounds because people still have some trouble with it. You know what? That's okay. We're all here to learn. Everybody started from somewhere, and right now a battle round is each player having a turn. All right, that's it. You go, I go, boom. Turn one. It's really battle round one, turn one, A, turn one, B. All right, because it's your, my player turn, your player turn. Uh, this messes people up with uh, some abilities where they're like, hey, yeah, my thing lasts the uh, the turn. Oh, it's turn one. All right, I had my turn in turn one. You have your turn in turn one. It's It, it just takes some getting used to. And just slow down, read the stuff. You're not going crazy. It was always called a battle round. And we're just going to go on from here. The roll-off. Priority roll. Robot dice roll-off, even. I, I have a big, big stress dice for this. Um, what it is, is starting at the end of the first battle round, players roll a dice to see who's going to go next. And it's not just like you win, you get it. You actually get to choose. Uh, this is what leads on to the, that whole uh, the scary bit we'll get to later. But the tie for this roll-off goes to the person who went first in the previous battle round. So I'm seeing a lot of new people. And actually, I went to a store where people have been playing for a good year or two where they were firmly convinced it was like 40k to start the game off. You know, you had a roll-off. Whoever finished the playing first got plus one. It No, this is Age of Sigmar. This is why drops and battalions were important in the previous slide to build up to this. And that's why deciding who goes first that first battle round matters. And sometimes you are, I know this is going to sound crazy, sometimes you're going to want to make the other person go first. Maybe it's to have them drop all their buffs and have to try to reapply them. Maybe they they move all their stuff out of the range of their buffing pieces. And you're like, okay, cool. Uh, your Archeon is not able to reroll all his saves, wounds, and hits because he's nowhere near the Sorcerer. And you're like, all right, yeah, take the turn. Flail around a little bit, Archie. It's okay. Uh, but all that's decided for who's going to go next, starting from Battle Round 2 on, is the priority roll. Now, again, scary time. I know. The double turn. Dun, dun, dun. The act of after going second in a Battle Round, that player goes first in the next battle round because some people are so scared of the double turn they just think it's whoever goes first in the next battle round stop it breathe relax we did a master class on list building that stops us from being afraid of the double turn and we embrace it all it's going to do is if the game was already going to be over we get a finale there if the person who is down gets the double turn, it's a catch-up mechanic. And here's the thing. Previous slide. Whoever wins the roll-off goes, right? But also, if there's a tie, whoever went first breaks the tie. That means statistically, if you went first in the battle round, you're not going to get double turned. Will it happen? Yeah, of course. It'll happen mostly because you're going to will it into being because you're freaking out over there on the other side of the table going, all right, if I just don't roll a one, I'll be okay. Actually, I rolled a six, so see? I'm fine. 
Alpha striking. So this is the whole, it's a strategy. You're like, all right, I'm going to be a KO guy. I'm going to teleport all my shit. I'm going to be uh, right up on you. I'm flying high. I'm going to jump right in front of you. I'm going to put my whole army there, and I'm going to shoot you off the table. I'm an Iron Jaws player. I'm going to double move my whole army and my Maw Crusher and send them right into your free guild guard. You know, I can run and charge with my Daughters of K. I'm going to run right up there, get my crazy six-inch pile in, and fight twice because I'm Kraith, and I'm using Sisters of Slaughter. This is that first turn, I'm going to punch you, and I'm going to beat the snot out of you Alpha Strike. That's what this is. Uh, what's important is if you're going to come, you better come correct. Because the moment you mess up, your whole army is going to be so exposed. And also, this is generally the uh, the first move of the game. This is your first turn. You know, haha, I'm going to big brain you, kid. I'm going to run up the board. I'm going to make all my 10-inch charges and just mess you up. And then if you don't, I just have to make like a 3-inch charge into you, and I'm going to shoot you dead and kill you because you moved right into range of me. And thank you so much. So again, if you're going to come for the king, come correct with this Alpha Strike. And now we're going to want to, it sounds like Alpha Strike, deep striking and ambushing. So we're going to have units in reserve. That's just all it is. Deep striking, ambushing, same difference here. Units are in reserve. Usually it's from either like a hero or the scenario lets you do it sometimes in narrative games. I know this is more match play, but follow me here. And sometimes it is in your allegiance ability. You know, think um, Stormcast if they don't go Stormkeep in the current book of 2.0. Who knows what they get in 3.0? I don't know, but we're future-proofing this. I'm goof-proofing it right here. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where, like, Shadow Warriors and the Stormcast, they can come anywhere off the table. They just have to be 9 inches away from you. And some things, like my beloved Living City have to come in off a table edge. They have to be wholly within six inches of that table edge. And I, there's ways to deal with this, again, with the with the chaff screening stuff, denying me areas to come out. That's why in our Masterclass list building episode, we, you know, that's why we built all that stuff in there into these lists, and we have the technology to do this. It's so that we, you know, the shooting army, KO, right? They're like, all right. I watched Rocco's video. I am not confident in taking first turn and alpha striking techless off the board. Nah, man. I'm going to give him first turn. They're like, all right, cool. I'm going to move all my, my chaff up to the middle of the board. I'm going to screen out because, you know, you can't end within nine inches of my unit. So if I have two units, 18 inches between them, you can't actually fit. And then, oh no, you still can't shoot my good stuff. My hammers are protected. You kill chaff that I don't care about 40-point aether wings. Maybe you hit anvils. As long as my hammers are still alive, I can still take you off the objective. And with that, folks, thanks for watching. And, uh, yeah, leave, like the slide says, like, comments, uh, talk about what you want to see covered next time, and please subscribe.